Mark, my liberty, would like to invite you to stare at walls for as long as humanly possible. It is part of a new meditation practice he has developed that he claims will allow practitioners to see the other sides of surfaces. I have been studying with him for several months now, and I can honestly say that I finally had a breakthrough the other day when his book arrived from the printer. I actually saw through the book, one page at a time. And on the other side, there were a bunch of people shooting an art film. Please welcome Mark La Liberty and Brick, Brick, Brick. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're just going to wait a second for my PowerPoint to start. We'll be, uh, we'll be looking at some things. front of the book. This is the back of the book. Brick, Brick, Brick is a book of um, essentially what I'm calling brick poems. Uh, there's about 90 pieces in the, in the manuscript, in the book. I guess it's not a manuscript anymore. It's a book. Um, there we go. So I thought the best way to approach reading this book would be to um, contextualize the project by sort of fitting it into my larger practice. Um, I'm a visual artist and a writer, and um, in this instance, uh, the project sort of hovers in kind of very unsafely in both of those realms. Um, we're going to start with, just very briefly, some early works, um, things that I felt looking b back through my, my work um, recently could kind of fit in and sort of explain how I got here. So early explorations. So I, in the early 90s, I was working on comics. I was playing with comics. I thought I, maybe I wanted to be a comic artist, or I guess we'd be called graphic novelists now. And uh, very quickly, characters faded. Um, I got very interested in brick walls. Could you go back one? quickly, sorry, that was a bit too fast. Um, I'm not sure if you can read this, but hopefully you can, um, and I won't read it to you. But I'll just point out that within the context of this strip that I started and quite quickly abandoned, um, I had lost characters and sort of hid characters, and you really got to, I really got interested in the architecture and sort of the randomness of the character interaction. So this was just a random city scene. Next. Uh, this is a three-page comic uh, about a woman trapped in a burning building. And I'll just quickly let you read it. And again, what was interested for me, interesting for me was the, my, my relationship to narrative and my relationship to foreground and background. And uh, yeah. She should have jumped. Yes. <laughs> Next. Um, at the same time, I was sort of pursuing a visual practice and exploring collage a lot and um, exploring collage in language forms, but also in sound forms. And this is an installation of uh, uh, it's the, for a project called the Audiodrome. It was a curated project where our artists were asked to explore sound um, sound ideas and I chose to explore the wall of sound which is like a, a way of mixing in the studio um, created by Phil Spector or attributed to Phil Spector and basically it, it sort of shows my interest in this sort of cellular form and I cast um, certain uh, cement blocks that had an empty center where I could put um, speakers and so it's a six channel audio mix coming out of this physical wall of sound with other elements in the in the space. Next. A little later, uh, and that piece was 1999. It was called Explaining Noise to Dead Air. This is uh, seven wake-up calls, a, 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 a multiple that I did. And so seven sandblasted bricks, 
meant to be thrown through windows. Next. Um, this particular piece, and this is an installation context with other works, and you can see that's a speaker piece, and there's sort of like something that looks like bricks, but is actually little cloth forms. But there's this pile down here. Next slide. And so this is a piece called Sexus, and um, it's based off of a, not really a quote, but some sort of collage quote that I pulled from Henry Miller's Sexus. And um, it's displayed in a pile, and it's kind of an ever-growing pile, and it's um, maybe my relationship to writing. Next. <laughs> Next. And so the actual text there is word upon word, brick against brick, put one brick upon another like an honest bricklayer. Um, I do a lot of collage poetry as well, so I have a book out called Suture, and the essential mechanism behind it is that I'm working with bound words in a kind of brick-like manner. Um, okay, and that's just a brief introduction to some front-end work. Next. So now we'll look at the brick, brick, brick. And I wanted to start with the cover. So this is actually the view outside my window, and it's a smokestack. Um, Queen West, where all that crazy construction's going on with all the condos right now. But I live in quite an old building, and there's a lot of really excellent decaying bricks. And for some weird reason, uh, we're not really getting great oranges here, but those things that look like mucky browns are actually vibrant oranges, kind of like this, or kind of like the next slide. So I feel that maybe looking back, my cover design was b based on the view out my outside of my window. And here's the back of the book again, which I've shown you briefly. But I wanted to have a kind of silent cover, um, something that was textless but sort of spoke to the project. We have this on the back. I'm, while you're here, I thought it would be interesting to see some failed covers. Uh, so this was the, the sketch of when, when Jay pressured me for a cover sketch for their catalog. I, I quickly came up with this bottom thing. And it's like a brick font or like a kind of pixel font that I found. Um, I decided later that I didn't like that cover, mainly because I didn't want words. Uh, this crazy thing on the top was my, my first attempt at this cover when I realized we were doing four color printing and I thought, well, I'll go crazy with color, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Next. And now to go into the book a bit, um, some sample interiors. So the content that makes up the book I was roughly 90 poems, and the poems are, they start as um, images look found in the backgrounds of illustrations, and I look at the bricks and sort of find a few to work with or some base to work with, and then sort of act as a kind of collagist or illustrator in a way to approach um, a grid that for me functions like a, like a poem singular words on a page um, in a very specific pattern. And the poems are actually named after the person or illustrator who I'm sourcing the starting material from. And so that's just five of potentially 90. The group, the book has a certain flow to it as well in terms of um, themes and whatnot. Next. So this is actually a diagram of a Lego pattern. Um, it's the patent for for Lego, and uh, it's, sorry, it's actually quite blown out, but there are two whole ones down in the corner. And I brought this up because while I was working on this manuscript, um, I was asked uh, by Derek Bolio to do a constraint-based writing project celebrating the 50th anniversary of Plastic Lego, and he asked 15 different writers to um, approach this for no press, I was asked, and I, realized that I actually could probably build something for my book as well. So this was the piece that I did. And it's named, of course, after uh, G.K. Christensen. And this was the piece that I did for Derek's book. Uh, next. And so um, we, were con we were limited to anything that appeared on the patent form. And so I did a kind of Lego coffin. And so that book was called Lego 5015. Next. Okay. Um, <coughs> so I've given you a bit of a peek into the book, what happens next. Um, for me, projects sort of overlap, and uh, they don't ever really feel quite done. So um, 
recently because I've been designing the book, I've become quite obsessed with the front logo and I'm sort of seeing it everywhere, even in the demolition around my house. And so I thought, well, it'd be interesting to guerrilla market my book by tagging around the city. We'll show you a few of those that I've been playing with recently. And one more. And I guess here I will talk about some of the thinking um, or just metaphorically take it further. And li I lied to you because I said I wasn't going to read, but I'm going to read a small thing. Nowhere is here. Where were we? Here. No, now, here. The factory where love was created sits next to the lake where the city hides its secrets. And that's my presentation for today. Thank you.